Hi, all. Thanks for coming on here and joining. Uh, this is the What's New in Creo 10 presentation. Uh, this is part one in the series, so there will be another one that you guys will see in the future. So the, the topics that we're going to cover, of course, are some enhancements within Creo 10. So we have sketcher, curves, part body enhancements, MBD, surfacing, holes, pattern, and we have an additive manufacturing enhancement piece as well. So my name is Bill. Um, I currently am the manager of the help desk, but I have a background in industrial design. There's my kid right there and myself at Walt Disney World. Um, P yeah, PDS Vision is a technology leader. Um, we are a software solutions developer for design and manufacturing, and some capabilities of ours include consulting, implementation services, professional training, cloud, and our awesome help desk. Software solutions and partners that we have, of, of course, are PTC, Moldex 3D, Etraj, Keyshot, ITI, and Samerix, to name a few. So again, so we're going to start off here with the core modeling uh, improvements. And the first one that we'll get into is the sketcher enhancements. We'll take a look at projecting a construction curve, which I think is awesome. I've been waiting for this for a while. Um, feature curve selection, um, how to manage a reference. So you can see in the bottom right hand and image, we have this cutout right there with a curve with some billets on the vertices there. And we'll, we'll take a look at what happens when you get rid of those. And uh, you can go and see where in the parts those changes were made. So we'll take a look at that. And there's this new cool curve enhancement for uh, Creo, where basically you can do this closed loop curve feature that will pull the intersections of edges on a solid model, sketches, and give you some uh, options as far as what you can select in that feature for your curve. All right, so let's get into the Creo part of this, and I'll go to my directory, and I'll just start off in the sketcher environment. All right, so let's take a look at the quick access toolbar right here, as you can see in the working directory, which is pretty cool. So right now we have this quick access right here where I can say, hey, I wanna find a part and just click in part mode there and it shows parts. There's assemblies and also if I had a drawing here, it would show drawings as well. So this feature is pretty cool. Previously it wasn't there in this window, but now if you wanna specify exactly what you're trying to find, whether it's a part, an assembly or a drawing, you can select the option for that and it'll show you the parts um, if, if you want to, like in this case right here. I'm trying to find the parts, so I'll go in here, set my, my directory, click on part and find the one that I want, which is the ABC project offset start. Make sure I'm in the right directory here. All right, so let's open up the ABC project offset here. Okay, and what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna take a look at the projection of construction, construction geometry. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this front surface here and go into sketch. So what we're used to seeing when we go into, into project, right, is, is the ability to project an actual curve and it's gonna show up as a sketched entity here like that, but now there's an option in project where I can turn on my construction mode and select that curve and actually actually project that curve as con construction geometry. And this is something that I've been waiting for for a long time. And I think that that's pretty cool. Um, I can also project, as you know, these different curves here on these circle sketches. So there's the one by one selection there's my chain selection. But what's nice is there's also another option where if I select this bottom curve, hold shift and grab this other curve over here, it's gonna give me what's called all curves in a feature chain. All right, and if I go here, you'll see that I have selected all curves in that feature. So there was a feature that existed before this one with curves in it, 
And all I had to do was just select one of, one of the curves, hold shift, select another one, and I get all the curves in the feature, which is pretty nice. There's also the offset feature that you can see here. And um, I'm actually going to get out of this and go into a different view. And I'm going to grab this top surface. What's real neat is you guys have, have seen this before, but um, if I want to do an offset and grab an edge, for example, I can hold shift and hover over this top surface. And that gives me the option to grab the surface loop. But what's nice about that is this becomes a composite curve, right? And I can do that and also grab the construction geometry, grab that edge, shift select. Okay, so now this is really a composite curve. But what's neat about it is even though I can, even though when I select it right now, I don't have the opportunity to select it, it, the individual entities of the sketch. When it comes to constraining and, and dimensioning, I, I will have that option in, in Creo 10. So if I go in here and grab a circle, for example, and sketch that circle, previously when I hovered over, right, it's going to grab that whole composite curve, construction curve. But if I want to constrain this or add a dimension, in this case, we'll use dimension, and I want to dimension from the center of that curve to this edge here to the left, notice that although it's a composite curve, I get the individual line that's part of that curve and I can use it as a reference. So I can grab that, grab that center point and dimension like so. And I can also constrain or I can say, hey, I want to offset six units from this edge, but also constrain it coincident right to this top line here that's part of that coincident or compositive curve, sorry. So yeah, so now, so that, that's just important to show that although it's a compositive curve, you can use the individual entities of that curve as a reference for dimensioning and constraining. Okay. And also, you know, you have the power within your trajectory features, for example, like a sweep, I can grab a profile curve, for example, you know, and then go in here and say, hey, let's create my section. And I still have the ability, like I should just in a flat sketch, right, to come in here and, you know, do an offset. I can grab part of that curve here, hold shift and get that chain selection, offset it in that, in that direction that I want, and then come in here and finish off my profile. So the offset feature is powerful. And you can see here, I'm basically creating it to get my section with some clearance here between the two parts. And I'll go ahead and sweep that around and create my next body, right? So that's pretty powerful stuff. Um, let's go ahead now and take a look at another feature. All right, and that's going to be the Sketcher demo. So let's go into this guy, ABC. And let's go into this guy right here and find the assembly. Perfect. Okay. So what I want to show is we have an assembly here. And it's basically we have this, um, this flat surface here that's inherited. It's in you know this first part and that second part. And what I want to show is this reference control feature that basically um, allows you to, to see, you know, what's missing in a in a sketch and how it shows you which parts that missing feature is in. So in this case, in, or, in order to show that, I'll just go ahead and create a failure. So I'll go into the vertex round here and get rid of it. So of course, when we do that, it's going to cause a, a failure. And we see that we have this warning right here in the sketch one of part two, demo two. So now if I go into sketch one and I go into my window right here, you can see that it's gonna show me that there is an issue, right? It says there, there's a reference right here that's, un, that's unresolved. And if I, if I select the reference here, 
in the window, it's got a little red dot to the left of it. And it also shows in, in the, the graphics window, uh, the complete loop. But what's new within Creo 10 is it actually shows you which part that is in. So in this case right here, it shows complete loop, but it also says demo one, part one, right? So now I know exactly where to look. Now, if I come down here and I right click and say, what's wrong? It's also gonna show me what's, what's going on. It shows me the exact feature, right? So it's showing me that, hey, vertex round that previously ex existed, this is gone and you have to figure out what you're gonna do to solve this problem. So it shows me the feature and the part that, that the feature is in. So pretty powerful stuff. Okay, so now let's take a look at the actual uh, curve creation, right? So I'm gonna go back into my main directory and let's take a look at this feature here. And again, I'm not seeing anything because I have the assembly icon selected, but if I wanna see my parts, I can either just deselect the assembly button or I can just select parts here as well and show it that way. Okay, this, this feature is pretty neat. So what we have here is a simple shape um, and it can extrude, we have a chamfer here on the bottom and on top of it, we have a layout of sketches, right? So I have sketch one right on top of this flat surface. So what I can do is I can concept in, you know, and say, hey, you know, I'm not quite sure, you know, where this curve needs to be or exactly how it should be laid out and constructed. But what I can do is I can give myself some options by creating curves where I think I, I may need them and then cycling through the options within this new feature. So I'm gonna go ahead and show that. So in the curve flyout menu, there is the closed loop curve. And the first thing I need to do is specify which surface that curve is gonna be on. And then what I can do is specify the actual boundary chain. So um, I can grab the whole loop chain on the surface. So there's a surface loop and I can also just hold control, right? And I can grab these different curves. And what's nice about this is it's basically gonna say, okay, you've selected all these curves and I'm gonna give you the options here. Or I'm, I'm gonna show you what, what your options are as far as the different curves that you can create. So to do that, I can just come up here and say, you know, show next solution. And then you'll see it's gonna say, hey, based on the intersections here, you can get this closed loop. If I click next, it'll show me the opposite one. Next again, it shows me this one and it highlights an orange here showing you what that option is. So pretty pretty neat feature. This is new to Creo 10 and I think that they did a great job thinking about this. So I'll click OK. And then now, of, of course, I can grab that curve. I can do a sweep around it, use that curve ho however I wish, right? All right, so now let's shift focus now to our bodies. Let me go back in here and find my bodies and I'll open up the first one here. Okay, so um, new to the Creo 10, um, they've combined the um, trim body in the split feature. So now we have both split and trim body in the same feature. So if I select that, um, you can see that we have our split by object. Currently I am using split, right? And of, of course I have to specify the body that I have to split and also the, the splitting object. So notice that um, even though this surface doesn't extend throughout the whole body, I'm still able to split that body. And the reason for that is I have an option called extend splitting object selected up here. If I deselect that and click OK, no one's going to say, hey, this is going to fail because Creo needs, needs to know that, you know, your, your in, intention is to extend the surface all the way through um, to split it. If you don't do that, it's not going to know what, what to do, right? So we'll use that extend, right? And we'll click OK. Now I can come in here and hide my bodies. So there's body one. I'll hide that, right? But notice, right? Nothing's changed as far as the colors in this, this model. So where it's split on this flat surface, you can see that's still showing as the same color. 
However, there is an option within split body that's called copy, copy surface appearance. And what's nice about that is whatever splitting surface you're using, whatever color that surface is will be propagated to the body that you're splitting. So in this case, we have this purple surface. And if I click OK and I have that copy surface selected and I click OK there, that purple surface is going to propagate to that body on the surface where that split took place, right? And if I go back in here and I redefine the color of that surface, for example, let's go to yellow and grab that surface. Right now it hasn't changed, right? But if I go back here to split body, click OK, right? Now that split surface doesn't take on uh, that color of, of the original quilt that was used to trim it, right? And of course, um, like I mentioned before, we not only have split, but we have trim. So I can just say, hey, I want to keep one side of this body. And then click OK. It's currently hidden, but we can show that, right? So there's body one. It's pretty cool that they combine those, those features in, into one. I think it, it makes sense, right? So there's the body to split. Splitting surface there. And again, we can kind of switch the size that we want, OK? Or trim. Right. Cool. So that's the, that's the power of that feature. Um, let's go ahead and let's move on to another feature that I think is great as well. So what we're going to show here is um, the impact that this um, Boolean operation will have on GD and T. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's take a look at these annotations that we currently have here. And I'm going to hide. Let's hide body six. All right. Or body one, sorry. OK, so currently, if we do a semantic query, let's grab like this surface profile here and go to semantic query. It's going to show us the same thing for the opposite. It's going to show us what that profile feature that GD&T is tied to, right? It's tied to this this surface and this surface right here, OK? Now, with that being said, you know, let's, let's show what, what happens when we make a change. So say, for example, I come in here and I do a Boolean operation, and I say, hey, this is the body I want to modify or change. And the modifying body will be this body six. OK, let's do a subtraction here. OK. Reference update is currently turned off. I'm going to click OK. Notice that that annotation that was currently showing that surface profile is, is gone, right? And if we go back to the annotate tab, we'll see that they're, they're suppressed. And that's because from a semantic standpoint, they don't know what surfaces they were using as a reference prior to this. Right, so what we can do in order to fix that is if we go into that body subtract feature, there's an update button right here, all right? So if I click on this, references are now transferred, right? They're transferred from that body six feature, right? Now to these, these surfaces here. And that's because the surfaces that were previously being used as a reference for that GD and T, right, are no longer there, but because of the actual subtraction operation that we did, it propagated those surfaces to this model now, right? And that's why these annotations are showing up and they're not suppressed. And we can actually check that if we go back here and grab that feature and do a semantic query, you can see that indeed now it's seeing that, hey, this is this is the reference here, right? All all this all the surfaces in, in red are are the uh, references for this feature here. Okay, so that's a pretty cool feature that they've added, and I think it's going to help out a lot of people. Um, let me close that out. So now we're going to shift to the surfacing features. So if I switch back here to my PowerPoint. Um, you can take a look that there's a new enhancement for the divide surface. So previously in this top left image, when you use that divide surface, 
um, it would only divide the surface at the intersection of the surface and a sketch. So for example, on the left side right here, you see both the green and the orange of the surface and also on the right side. So that's that's what it would do in the past. It would only take the intersection points of the curves and the surfaces and, and divide them or split them there. Within Creo 10, they changed that. And I think it makes sense now that not only will it divide the surfaces where the intersection is with the sketch, but anything that falls completely within the sketch or inside that sketch. Um, they've also improved the um, functionality of the divide as well as far as, you know, once you've split up the, the surface in this example with this text or, or the, these numbers that you see here, once you do that, when you shift or you move that over, um, sometimes those colors used to break, like for example, down below here in the bottom right image, we see this orange color in the numbers. Previously, after this operation, if you move those numbers over, right, the color would go away and those colors would, would change. So it just made that, that feature more accurate and robust, I guess, would, would be the term. Um, let's also take a look at a new feature in Freestyle, which is pretty cool. So now um, you can actually take a a model inside you know the the feature like this spoke or whatever this this part of the rim and you can actually take it rotate it around an axis to find the number of pattern members and what's cool about that is just like a normal pattern outside of the freestyle feature you have your leader feature and you can always go back in there and make changes and uh, modify that as well so let's go ahead and switch back to creo and take a look at the first divide surface feature Okay, so here it is right here. If I hover over this surface, you can see that shows us the surface ID 2030, right? And I'm gonna go in here to, to divide surface, hover over that surface here, select it. And of course, right now it's asking me for a sketch, right? So I can grab that sketch and divide it. And it gets me, like I showed before, not only the surface divide on the left and right sides where it intersects the sketch, but also what's in this complete sketch curve. So that's it right there. And now let's also take a look at the um, divide surfaces. So this, you know, basically what we're going to show here is the stability of the feature and the increased stability. So let's take a look at that. So I'm going to grab this wrap feature here and same thing. We'll just divide the surface and I'll, I'll define the surfaces that we're going to split. And let's grab a color and add that as well. Okay, so now, now that we, we have that color, previously, if you had a, a, a scenario like this, for, for example, where you had a, a color where it's split on the model, in this case, where, these, where you have the, the curves for the numbers, if I made a change to this, for example, and I shifted this over before, Previously, if I did that, the colors, that yellow might change, right? It may change back to the blue on this side or this zero may change to gray, for example. But you can see here that they put in some work and they've modified that, that feature to where you can move that thing around and you don't have to worry about these colors changing, right? Let's take a look at Creo Freestyle here a second. So this is a basic shape in, in Freestyle. And for those of you that have used this tool before, you know how cool it is because it allows you to quickly create surfaces with a high degree of curvature and um, you can just kind of push and pull and stretch the model. Um, in this case, what I'm gonna do is grab shape two and select it in the Freestyle tree and go up here to rotational pattern. And it's asking for an axis, so I'm just going to use my coordinate system Z axis in this case. All right, so now we just have four pattern members. I can do an angular extent too, so that when I increase the number of pattern members, it's going to be equ equidistant basically between each one of the pattern members as it's going around 360. So 
there are six. Now what's cool about this, just like the normal pattern is, not only did it pattern this, but I can go back in here and modify the pattern leader. So if I take this guy, for example, and move that up and translate that pattern leader, all the children of that pattern leader will also up update and modify as well. I can go in here and quickly start creating my my shape. That's pretty powerful stuff, right? I can then take this, pull these in as well. And we'll just do a little bit of work here just for, for those of you that haven't had a chance to really play around with that freestyle feature much. And let's inset that and then connect it. So the whole point of this is to really show you how quickly you can start concepting within the freestyle feature and start creating your curves there and making changes and modifying that stuff. It's pretty fun. Okay. All right, so now let's let's move on here and take a look at the PowerPoint here. So let's now take a look at some whole enhancements. Okay, so what I wanna show here is the, the parameters that you have now in the whole enhancement. So if I grab this circle or this hole, sorry, and edit it, if I go to my properties tab, you can see that I have this checkbox for add parameters. And if I select that, you can see that it's showing me these uh, default hole parameters. I have my hole type, hole depth, drill, the, the drill di diameter and my values there. But just wanted to show you guys too that um, you can modify your whole table. So for example, these parameters that you're seeing here are for my simple whole type flat. So if I pull up this right here, you can see that you can actually take this whole whole file and actually update this to your liking. And what you're seeing here, the last three of these are the um, user defined parameters. Okay. And these parameters can be changed. You can add some, specify which, which ones you want to use in this file. And then these will pull into Creo here and you'll see them. So, and that's the same for the standard hole type. If I do a drilled, so that drilled type, right, then gives me the um, type MCAD manufacturing, right? And that, that file is also right here as well. And you can see that these whole parameters within Creo inside this whole feature are being pulled from the whole files. So um, the first place it's gonna look for is in your common files for, for Creo in that text folder. Um, but the next place, if it's, that it's gonna look, if it's not there, is in your working directory. So if you have this folder here in your directory, it's gonna pull in these, these parameters for you. So once you have that, um, and you've selected that add parameters box, you can then go to the note tab and click the add note checkbox. And that, now when you click okay, you can see that that annotation is gonna show up here in, in that part, right? So I just wanted to make sure that you guys knew where that was in Creo 10 and how that works, right? And of course, these parameters are also here within Creo. If you go to your parameters, there's your part parameters. You can switch to your feature parameters as well and see those parameters there, okay? All right, of course, they're showing up, you know, locked here. Those are being pulled, you know, from that file and also from the feature, right? I can go back in here, for example, and say, hey, you know what, let's change this, you know, drill tip angle from 118 to 115. And if I do that and go back to my properties, it's gonna show that that, angle also, the value for that angle changed here in those those parameters as well. And again, you know, if I go here, it's gonna show that change here as well inside that feature parameter. One, there, there's 115 there for the drill point angle. So that's pretty cool. Um, let's take a look at patterns in, in general here. So let's go ahead and switch to the patterns folder. And we'll start off with this guy right here. So this is a 
current pattern that we have. So we have this style feature that was created. So we have this, we have a, a revolve here and a thickened to get the shape right. We also have some extrudes right here. And this was of course patterned. So if I go into the first pattern here, you can see that we have an axis pattern. So they created an, an extrude. And they use an axis to revolve around to get this, to get these four cut patterns, right? So what I'm gonna do now is create another pattern on top of this one. And in this case, um, I'm actually going to do something else. So I'm actually gonna find this, this, this point, right? This point zero 0.05, which is basically, if I get out of this, this is coming from this datum point that's on the curve. So we have this blue curve right here that was used for that revolve. And you can see if I go into that feature, it's showing that it's, it's a ratio, right? It's 0.05, it's at a ratio of 0 0.05 along the curve, right, starting at this endpoint, okay? So we're gonna use that dimension in our next pattern here as an increment, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And that one's gonna be 0.5, so I'll just do, I'll grab that one, keep the increment at 0.5. But what's new is that you can also create an increment now in patterns using the number of patterns, okay? So for example, we have four extrudes here, right? I can grab that guy as well, okay? And I can change that to four. So I can increment that and then also change this guy. Let's maybe make that 12 and then click okay. So previously, th this was a lot harder to do. And they've really sped, sped that up in this, in this feature and, and improved the, the quality and the uh, capability of the feature. So again, you know, that's just me going in here, you know, getting, getting the increment for that first offset from the end point of that curve. Uh, and then also grabbing that pattern, but the pattern number, and then also creating an, an increment from that pattern number, which is new to Creo 10. So that's a pretty cool feature. So that's a pretty cool feature, but we can harness that also in a different way. Um, if I open up this, this other part right here and I grab this guy, all right, I can now go in here, same thing, grab another pattern and I'll use this 140 dimension and get an increment of negative 40, all right? But I also will wanna grab the two extrudes and do an increment of that too. So I'm gonna say two, my pattern members will be four, right? So basically what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say, hey, you know, I wanna offset a unit of 40 from left to right here. Um, and I also want to increase the number of extrudes at each index. So there's the first, second, third, fourth. So we'll have two here, four, six, and then eight. Like that, right? And then from here, I can grab that and I can mirror it over, right? But if we want to do it a different way, what we can do is we can say, hey, you know what? Let's actually use a equation to, to do this. So the way to do that is you're going to select your increment and then in here, you'll say define increment by a relation. And now if I select that, I can come in here, right? And I can grab my, my relation like this and plop it in there, right? So now basically what I'm saying, hey, if the index is less than four and I'm gonna change this to eight or else it's not gonna work, um, we'll paste it again. So we have eight, eight members, it's but saying, hey, if, if the index is less than four, so if you're below four, right, then you're gonna only add an additional two, right? If your index is at four, you're gonna be flat. You're not gonna add any more. If you're greater than, than four, you're gonna add two, right? So to see that, we'll click okay here and then click okay. And there it is. You can see that, you know, if we're less than four, so here's the, fourth number here, one, two, three, fourth, there's the fourth row. If we're below four, right, we're, we're adding two when we go from the, the first row to the next row. So two, four, six, eight. 
then if we're greater than, than four, we'll start to, to taper and do a negative two, right? And that's defined here, again, just to show you. Should still be there. There it is. Negative two. Yep. So that's powerful. So just wanted to show that you can not only, you know, use the pattern numbers, the number of uh, pattern members as an as an increment now, but you can also um, use that in conjunction with the uh, equations as well inside Creo. Okay, cool. So now let's take a look at some additive manufacturing enhancements. And the first one that we'll take a look at is this new rhombin with rhombic with diamond structure and also the elongated dodecahedron cell type. So let's go ahead and get rid of this guy and let's go into our additive folder. Okay, so the first one that we're going to open is this guy right here. So um, basically, this lattice that we're going to create is like great for implants because when you when you make a lattice structure for an implant, you want it to be as you want the lattice to be as random as possible because the way that bone grows, for example, um, it it needs something to hold on to that's random in nature or in structure. So this lattice type that we're gonna take a look at is great for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into the lattice right here. And I'm gonna do a, I'll create a lattice with, with this body. And I'm also going to do a shell like that. And I'm gonna change my cell type right now to this rhombic do dodecahedron. All right, I'm gonna modify the cell size a little bit here. Simplified rep type. So then there's my myself. I'm gonna kind of bring this down a little bit. It's too large right now, so I'll change that ball size and the cross section size. Okay, so now I've got it where, where I want it. Thickness. Let's create a, a new body with that as well. And let's go into cell fill, cross section. Okay, and let's do a preview. Okay, so that's exactly what, what we want, right? So um, I'm also going to make sure I had that surface selected. Perfect. Okay, so I've got the, I'm using my body to, to create my lattice, but I'm also doing using this shell as well. There's the thickness for the shell, it's 1, 1.6. Now, what's, what's nice about this is I also have um this diamond shape that i can add so there's my cell fill and the diamond structure okay and then in my cell type um you know i can adjust my, my cell size further if i want this more dense i could change the cell size from like 0.5 to 0.25 for example um and i also have this skew angle right so if i go into my front view here um, I have a skew angle, I can change that to 15, for example. All right, distortion is also great. The distortion is gonna take all the, the spheres that you see, those little nodes, and it's gonna move those, you know, in the X, Y, and Z directions, right? And basic, and again, what this is doing is just um, increasing the randomness of this lattice structure so that when it's implanted into a person, um, the the bone will be able to identify the randomness and, and grow accordingly. So that's the goal here. So there's 0.5. So now we have a lattice, lattice structure that's random enough 
um, to be used as an implant for somebody for, um, for you know, for, for healing and bone growth and that kind of thing. All right. Okay. So let's close this one out and let's take a look at the next one here. Um, and this type is called the eye graft and raft package graft type, which is basically um, just like a gyroid within Creo, but different. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that guy and go back into my lattice, replace body with lattice. Okay. And I'll do a shell as well. And I, I actually want to um, exclude the front surface and that top surface. All right. Cool. So we've got that. And I also want to change this to a formula driven type. All right. So this is this is driven by a complex formula. I'm going to have that selected as well. But my cell type, there's a gyroid. I want to change this to IWP. Again, that stands for I graph and wrap package graph. Now, this lattice type is really great for um, heat transfer or like heat and or heat and energy absorption, right? So that it gives you a high degree of surface surface area for the heat to transfer through, and it's also great for self-supporting structures. Um, so it's pre it's pretty strong as as well. So let's take a look at this. I'll change my cell size here a little bit. Change my wall thickness. And let's do a, a preview here to check it out. There it is. So if you take a look at it, you can see that there's more surface area than you would see, you know, like using a, a beam type of structure with, within lattice, right? So you have a lot more in there than you typically would. So again, this is great for absorbing heat and energy. It's also great to use for st structural integrity and, you know, where, where you need a lot of strength in a certain, certain spot. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so now let's take a look at the last type of lattice here that we're gonna show. And this one is the um, auxetic type. Now this lattice type is great. If I bring this up, um, typically um, with a non-auxetic material, if you were to add a force to the top surface, in this case here to the right, you can see this example with the ball here dropping. Um, typically what would happen is you would apply a force, that a force would, would, would be applied to the lattice, right? And it would it would cause stretching to where it would it would bow and you would get material like out outside of the area that you would want it. So it's gonna push down, it's gonna kind of bow out here to the left and to the right. So basically what PTC has done is they've created a num another type of lattice structure here called auxetic. And basically what, what that does is it creates angles in the lattice in a way that when a force is applied, like you see, like you see here in this bottom right image, it's not going to expand outward. It's actually going to pinch inward. So you can see it's actually going to pinch in here on the left side and the right side of this bottom right image and to the very left of your screen or the slide, you can actually see what what this does. So we, we know that, you know, typically if you get, you know, pain somewhere in your back, spine, that's caused by, um, that's, that's caused by pressure being built up in a way to where like this, uh, this cartilage is going to, to move outward and then pinch a nerve. So that pinched nerve is what's gonna cause that pain, right? But this auxetic type, if implanted, will prevent that. So that when there's pressure on, on the spine, it's compressing, 
that auxetic lattice isn't going to expand or, or um, push outward. It's actually going to push inward. So this is a breakthrough for the lattice types, and especially and anybody that's involved with implants and uh, surgeries like you know any any surgery like this where you're going to need this lattice type. So it's pretty groundbreaking and uh, need to see that, that improvement here. So let's take a look at that, just so you can see it up close in Creo. So there's a lattice predefined for us. And we're going to go in here. You can see that you know it's the same layout. We have the, the beams here. And I'll go to preview so that we can actually see the lattice. Right. So currently, the cell type is set to this auxetic with one angle. So we have our cell size, x, y, and z. That's the same. Um, then, but we also have an x angle. All right, so we can come in here and let's go into a different view and modify the X angle. So right now it's at 15. We can change that to 35, for example. And it gives us more of a severe angle. So we just have it in that, that one direction. There's also another type of auxetic called auxetic with two angles. If I select that, as you, can, as you can guess, it's gonna give us not just the one X angle, but also this Y angle as well. So there's a result to your right of a lattice, a lattice with the, the 35 degree angle and the 15 for the Y, but we can also you know, change the Y angle as well. And see what happens once, once we do that. Okay, uh, we also still have that skewing angle too. So if I need to, I can come in here and you know add an angle to that so it's not completely straight up and down and get that, that skewing angle. And what's what's nice about this as well is that PTC has actually worked directly with the companies that, that ask for these type of, of lattices because what happened was they were having to go outside of Creo and use third party software. Um, and they, they mentioned to the PTC and said, hey, you know, we're having to do this. It would be a lot easier if these lattice types that we were getting from other software were included within Creo. So this is where we're at right now with that. Okay, the last thing I wanna show is, um, this enhancement too. So basically uh, we are gonna show how you can actually bring in data from a simulation and pull that into a lattice structure. So for example, we have this connecting rod, right? And what we're gonna do is there was a stress test performed for us. So there was a, there was a simulation set up to find constraints, forces, test was run, and it basically shows that there is more stress in one area of that connecting rod than the other. And what's cool about that is that you can pull that data in once that study is finished, you can pull that into a lattice and use that data to generate the lattice that you need to um, reinforce the, the areas that are, are weakest so that it can withstand the, the level of, of force that, that we need here. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Okay. So let's open up this assembly here. And right off the bat, let's just do this. Let's go into our simulation environment. So you can see that we have some loads added to this. We have materials, loads, and an analysis. We have constraints. So there's a load set up, up there. So we have a certain amount of force being applied to the top of that piston there, right? We have a constraint here on the bottom of that connecting rod where a pin would be inserted there. Um, we also have um, an analysis that, that was run. So what we're gonna do is let's take a look at the results from the analysis that was set up. And I'll open up this one right here. So this is gonna show us, basically this is a um, stress test showing us where where most of the stress is being applied to that connecting rod. You can see that as it moves, it's on the bottom right-hand side here. Okay, 
So this is the data and it's basically showing us, hey, you know, in this area, you know, we have to reinforce that area so it's strong enough to withstand that stress. So once we have that study, what we can do is um, we can exit out of the simulate environment and we can go into our connecting rod and then into lattice. And I'm basically going to go ahead and modify this so that I can pull all that information in, right? You can see that this information, that stress is going to create this lattice here. It's going, to, it's going to tell us where to create this lattice and where to reinforce it, right? So I'm going to come in here and I'll go to my simulation and I'm going to pull in the data from that simulation that we ran right there. And I'll go to formula driven because, of course, you know, we're pulling in data from the, the formulas from simulate and i'll do that so i got my body in there and then i also have gyroid selected which is good i think my wall thickness should be okay as well pull that down so now let's do a preview and take a look at that Perfect. Okay, so here, here's the result. So we did our, our study previously in, in Simulate. Um, it, I identified where most of the stress was, which was on the right side here. And you can see that it basically ad ad adjusted the lattice, that gyroid lattice, specifically to where the stresses are. So it said, hey, in this area, because we need this area of that of that connecting rod to be reinforced, right, we need more material, right? We need more in this area on the right side than we do on, on the left. So you can see that this this is the result that we're going to get, right? So, you know, this we 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 may not use this exact this exact part or we or we, we may not use this lattice type for this specific part, you know, in this in this scenario, because you can see the kind of you know geometry it creates. It, it wouldn't be that the kind of you know geometry that we would need in this case, but it is a nice a nice study and it shows us you know what that tool can be used for in, in the future and how powerful it is. So thanks for joining. That's all I have to share today. So this is part one of the What's New in Creo 10. Um, there will be a part two. If you have any questions, you can send me an email. There's my email there, uh, bdrosos at pdsvision.us. You can also contact sales um, as, as well. And we have a bunch of videos on YouTube if you guys haven't seen that already. So you can search for PDS Vision on, on YouTube and pull up a whole host of videos that we have going back to you know way way back when at least 10, you know, 10 years ago, I think. So, all right, so right now I'll open it up for questions if you guys have any. Yeah, so this, somebody asked, will you be sharing this video to review again? Yeah, so this video after today uh, will be posted on, on YouTube. I think it'll either be posted at some time tonight or, or tomorrow morning. Thank you all for, for joining. I appreciate your time and you have a good day. Bye.